Welcome everyone. This is Welcome everyone. This is Crystal Sanford of Sanford Autism Consulting. I'm so glad to be here with you today. I'm so glad to be here live with Ethan Hirschberg uh, of Through the, the Journey Through Autism. And we are going to be sharing today about autism and our adventures in autism. So you are in for a treat. Um, Ethan is a wonderful young man with a great story. And I'm just really looking forward to sharing and hearing more about that. So um, for those of you um, who don't know, I'm Crystal Sanford of Sanford Autism Consulting. And I am a speech pathologist. I'm also an autism consultant and an autism parent. And uh, through Sanford Autism Consulting, I offer hope for the journey of many other families like myself who are parenting children with autism. And uh, Ethan, tell us a little bit about what you do. For sure. So um, again, my name is Ethan Hirschberg. Um, I am 16 and I have high functioning autism and I run my own blog, The Journey Through Autism, where I share my personal experiences, my insights and advice to individuals on the spectrum as well as parents, caregivers, educators and providers. And I am also a motivational speaker and try my best to advocate for the autism community through all of my activities. It's amazing. Thank you. Um, at 16, is there anything you don't do? <laughs> yeah, a few things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's amazing. So, you know what? I'm going to just adjust this. Everybody, pardon me for doing that. I'll make sure that we get the best view possible. There we go. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to chat a little bit today about our stories. Um, I think your story is amazing. I'd love to share that with our audience. And I'll share just a little bit briefly about uh, my journey with autism. I, again, I'm a speech pathologist. I've been in the field for 20 years, and in 2014, my oldest daughter at that time was three and a half, and she was diagnosed with high-functioning autism, just like you, Ethan. And so our journey began at that point. I had supported individuals with autism for so many years, and so that's what kind of gave me the clue that my daughter was having some challenges that could be autism and it uh, was found to be so and so with early intervention she's come a, a really long way made a lot of progress and uh, and she's you know a wonderful child so that's kind of where I'm coming from as a clinician but also as a parent um, so tell us a little bit Ethan about your story like your diagnosis and how did all that start for you for sure for sure and if you guys have any questions by any chance um feel free to comment and we will try our best to answer them. Um, so I started, well, I was officially diagnosed with high functioning autism when I was two and a half years old. And my mother is a um, clinical psychologist. So she thought and had an idea, I'd say, when she was probably, um, or when I was about um, six months old. Or so. Wow, that's really pretty yeah. early. Yeah, um, just noticed a few different um, developmental milestones that mm -hmm. I was not getting at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously not self-diagnosed at all, but uh, she had the feeling about it. Mm -hmm. So when I was old enough, I was two and a half again, I got diagnosed through the local uh, Rady Children's Hospital. And... Um, then my mom first tried to tell me when I was eight years old. And what she did was she um, read me a book called um, Blue Bottle Mystery and Asperger Adventure by Kathy Hootman. And this book, um, the main character in the story named Ben, um, a little boy who had Asperger's. And she started to read this book out loud to me. And within, I'd say, the first chapter or so, I started to squirm and cry and mm. scream and cover my ears. Wow, wow. And the reason was because I felt that Ben, the character with Asperger's, was too similar to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So my mom knew that that wasn't the right time. Okay. So then later, um, two years later, I was 10 years old, and that's when she told me. Um, it wasn't planned at all, because I'm, I was very curious and still am. Um, so I always knew that I was different, just didn't know why. Okay. So I just went and I asked my mom again, you know, why am I different? Mm -hmm. And that's when she told me. 
So what she did was she went and she got out two pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. And on one piece of paper, she got her own strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. and wrote them down. Wow. And on the other, she put my own strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And she told me that people that have similar strengths and weaknesses to what I have, have something called autism. Wow, wow. That's powerful um, that at 10 years old, you were kind of able to grasp that. And I love how your mom showed you not just the areas of, of weakness, but the areas of strength. Mm -hmm. and, and that was able to kind of give you a place to see that, you know, yes, you're different, but yes, you're also just like everybody else. And in some areas, probably uh, exceptional, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. so that it wasn't such a negative kind of a time for you, mm -hmm. I, I would assume. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's, that, that's great. And I think that's been a question that a lot of parents ask is, um, when do you ask, or when do you uh, tell your child that they have autism, or how do you start that conversation? Um, and we do want to give a shout out to my dad. Oh. Uh, your camera dad. is turned sideways. Okay, dad, let's see. That better? Let's see. Rotate your device. Oh, is it up? Does it have to be like this? Maybe. Is this better? Let's see. All right, Dad's going to keep us on point. Let's see. Is this better? All right. Let us know. Thank you so much. Let us know if that's any better. Um, so there's many parents who would say that, you know, do I tell my child that they have autism? Is it a good idea? Is it not? Um, I've worked with clients who are teenagers, and they're just asking the question that you asked at 10. And so we're trying to help them to process through that. And so to see how your mom did it, I think that was, that was wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me what you would think, what you would say is your greatest strength, uh, being an individual with autism. And at this point, like your mom said, thanks so much, uh, <laughs> Dad. Uh, what's your greatest strength and your greatest challenge? Okay. Um, so I, I would say strength-wise, um, for me, it would be my hyper focus in general. Um, so, and if you guys don't know, a hyper focus is just a um, the the term obsession is used a lot, but I don't exactly like that term just because that kind of has like a negative co connotation in our society. Mm -hmm. So, I think of it as like a special interest. Mm -hmm. So, it's a special interest that that someone with autism has, and it's a, it consumes your whole day and it's very focused and extreme. So for instance, mine is business. So through business and entrepreneurship, I've been able to do multiple different um, entrepreneurial experiences. And so for instance, math is um, a um, strength for me. So I mean, I can go and whatever, you know, some pe people do in their calculator, I can do in my head. Um, so certain things like that as well as writing and a challenge for me the biggest one would definitely be um, within social skills and with um, with perception and uh, perspective taking um, I obviously have many difficulties with this and I would say that I've had multiple different struggles when it comes to you know finding out you know like in understanding that one person can have a different perspective than what I have and often what happens is that I'll go and I'll think of something and someone will think of something else totally different and that whole communication part of the autism spectrum um, is one of my challenges. Yeah. Wow. Okay, would you say that you've this has been an ongoing area or something that's uh, become more challenging as you've gotten older, or what would you say to that? Um, I would definitely say that, that it's been an on ongoing um, challenge. I think that it's been more um, noticeable since I've been, you know, through all of my speech therapy, I've been able to get a little bit more social. Okay. So the more social instances that I had and the more social interactions I have, the more likely the more times that mm. these types of issues and occurrences will come up. Okay. So I think that it's more noticeable now, mm -hmm. but it has been that way for a very long time. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. You know, and it sounds a lot like in, in our situation with my daughter, who's uh, seven and a half now, um, we're often explaining to her, and she's been in therapy like you from early on, um, we're often explaining to her that her perception or her idea may not be the idea of her friend, um, and that she has to kind of share the thinking, share the play, um, and it's okay that she might have one perspective or she might want to do one thing, but she has to kind of give space to other people. Or if somebody else says the answer that she says, you know, she gets upset. It's like, it's okay. Everybody can have that good answer and that correct answer. Mm -hmm. So um, that's something that we have uh, been working on with her um, mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to just say thank you again for those who are just now tuning in. This is again, Crystal Sanford of Sanford Autism Consulting. And we're here today in Adventures in Autism with Ethan Hirschberg from uh, the, journey with, uh, the Journey Through Autism, which is his uh, blog that he has as one of his entrepreneurial um, activities. And he has many. Um, and we are just here today sharing our experiences about autism. And I'm just so uh, glad and honored to have Ethan here today. Thanks. Um, so we want to say thanks to uh, those who are watching. Uh, good to see you, Donna and Katie. Um, and we're just going to keep on talking. And if you guys have questions that you want to add, definitely add them to the comments and we will do our best to answer them um, now. And if not now, we'll definitely make sure that those questions get answered after the video. And the video will be able to be viewed afterward. There'll be a, a replay um, after uh, tonight. So our next question. Oh, good to see you, Catherine. Thank you. Um, our next question. Uh, what has been the best resource? Now, this was a question that came up. Uh, we did a poll uh, before tonight's event uh, to see what, people's, what people wanted to know about autism. Um, and this month on, on my website, my page, we're talking a lot about autism facts and myths. And so what people wanted to know about was um, what helps individuals with autism. So, and I could say a lot of things that I've seen to help for my daughter who's seven, but I'd love to hear your perspective of what's been the best resource or the best avenue or, uh, or person that you've encountered that has helped you, you would say, one of the top that has helped you the most as an individual with autism. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say um, multiple different things for, you know, in general, but um, just to name a few, um, one would be therapy, um, especially early intervention. I think that the earlier that someone with autism is diagnosed and can start that early intervention, the better. Um, so besides therapy, though, I would say things that have helped me would definitely just be all the support and accommodations that I've been able to receive, either uh, support with family or accommodations through my IEP at school or um, any different type of um not not exception, but any sort of help that I, I can get is so supportive. Um, you know, family educators, even, you know, even from, you know, students, you know, any sort of, you know, hi, how's your day going, you know, makes my day all the time. So even little things like that are really helpful. And I can, I, I'm going to guess that maybe people don't realize how much that uh, helps you in your day. Um, just, just the high, just the, um, just the, to know that you're accepted and you're a part of the school or community, just like everyone else. Absolutely. And I think an awesome thing about that was that, um, you know, I've given multiple different presentations to my, uh, school, either to, um, staff or to, uh, the AP and intro to psychology classes and newspaper interviews and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I think that I've been able to connect with the school a lot as well. That's that. great, that's great, that's awesome. So we have a question, um, Catherine wants to know, do you deal with hypersensitivities? And if so, what have you found that helps you with that? As in overstimulation? Well, I w I'm gonna s guess that she maybe she's referring to sensitive to sound or light or mm -hmm. kind of related to, yeah. to that, or textures or foods. Mm -hmm. or yeah, for sure. Um, so, uh, again, I'm extremely uh, sensitive, um, and overstimulation has been a big challenge for me as well. Um, when it comes to things like textures, um, you know, I'm a picky eater, you know, so, um, and thank you for the clarification. Um, you know, for instance, with 
I'm a picky eater so with textures and things like that and things such as like um, I like you know like regular like great great tomatoes on like a salad but I don't like ketchup or tomato sauce mm -hmm. and things like that okay. um, where it's the texture mm -hmm. um, when it comes to like lights and um, sounds I would say for instance um, I mean in, in it, um, especially with sounds you know I, I can hear many things that others can't mm -hmm. uh, We'll have to tell them later about that light stroke because it keeps actually flickering. Wow. Yeah. That's so um, crazy because my daughter <laughs> says it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Literally, she's like, Mom, it's flickering. Why is the TV flickering? It's like, that, flickering. and then it's making some, like, heartbeat kind of sound. So wow. we'll have to tell them that's broken later. That's crazy. Um, that's but, um, that's so just things like that. I mean, just random things that, live, like, that was just a coincidence that, that happened. But, hey. Wow. Um, and if you were, I'm going to go with this. So yeah. if you, let's say you had to work in this room. Mm -hmm. for you know for two or three hours yeah. would you be able to tune that out or would you have to leave this room for those of you who aren't here there are fluorescent lights in this room uh, but there's one apparently that um, <laughs> has some some challenges in and of itself <laughs> so would you be able to function in this room let's say to do you know you're blogging on the computer that mm -hmm. kind of thing um just from the amount that i've been able to to you know i've experienced so many different types of sounds and over stimulatory um actions i guess that due to the combination of it happening so often mm -hmm. and meds mm -hmm. you know i'm used to it okay. but personally yes i would be able to um however things that have helped me i would say would definitely be um more of on the side of coping with it actually because mm -hmm. there you because you can't really change um the point that you know something is going to happen yeah you, know, you know you you can move into like a different environment i guess mm -hmm. but usually you know you can't change exactly how it happens mm -hmm. so what you have to change is how you cope with it yeah. and i would say stuff that i i've done um I, i've used weighted blankets mm -hmm. um a lot um, which have helped me tremendously. I've used um, different fidgeting toys um, and just different products, I guess, that have, that have been recommended to me, I guess, that have really been able to help once I'm overstimulated, being able to go and um, help me calm down. Okay. Wow. wow. That's, that's amazing. Um, and so, wow, that, that's just so good. And this is why when we met on uh, LinkedIn, and I'm so glad that we did because uh, when I heard about you and your story, it was just like uh, amazing for me to be able to find an, a, a young adult who was thriving, who had the ability to kind of articulate your story. I think as parents of kids with autism, we're often thinking, you know, what's going to happen to my child, especially if they're less verbal. What are they thinking? What are they experiencing? And to be able to hear it from you, um, just, you know, what your daily experiences are kind of gives us insight into the life of our kids. And, and I think hope, too, um, that our kids may have certain challenges when they're younger, but they may find ways to, to compensate and to cope so that they're able to still be successful in mm -hmm. their future. So Absolutely. Um, so I'm just tickled that I was <laughs> able to, to connect with you. That's so good. Um, and let the questions keep coming. If you guys have more questions, definitely let us know. Um, so my next question is, um, what are your plans for the future? Okay. So I know you talked about like hyper focus and business as a hyper focus for you, which is a benefit to the rest of the world uh, because <laughs> Ethan is an amazing um, entrepreneur. Um, he's done some work already in helping me with my website, and um, it's been phenomenal. And, I mean, this guy is on it. You know, I gave him a list of things I wanted done, and without me even having to say a word. Um, he had it done and sent me an invoice. I mean, it, he was better than some adults that I've worked with. So, I mean, I, I appreciate your hyper focus for business, mm -hmm. you know, and I look forward to continuing to work with you in that regard. But um, what else do you see um, for yourself and for the future? And what obstacles do you see that um, might be there and in, in your plans to address those? Mm -hmm. um, so for, for the future, I mean, again, I'm only 16. 
So, I know, um, I know, the future. Um, I sometimes I forget that you're yeah. always 16. So, so uh, finished high school, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, a little bit more of me then. Oh, there you go. Um, there you go. Um, I, I would say, um, you know, a- after um, high school, definitely college. My parents would shun me if I didn't go. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but on top of that, I am really interested in higher education in general. So, um, college definitely. Um, not exactly sure what I'm wanting to do, but I mean, if I can keep doing what I'm doing now, like as a career, being able to support like a family and all, you know, that would be great. You know, continuing as um, you know an advocate and speaker, upcoming author, um, and those sort of activities in general um challenges coming up I would definitely say with college um you know just going and for instance um you know the special education in colleges you know I'm not sure exactly how that all works Mm -hmm. and that will definitely be a new challenge you know going away from parents and everything and going and figuring out which accommodations I can get in which you know, well, you know, classes wise and things like that um, would be one um, upcoming challenge. Yeah. Definitely. Which I think you will. Um, <laughs> I love Dad. Dad will not shun Ethan if he doesn't okay. go to college. Okay. We know he's got what it takes. <laughs> um, and there are accommodations, right? Yes. I mean, there are um, services for students with quote unquote disabilities. Um, uh, so those there are departments within colleges that Correct. are there to serve our um, individuals with all kinds of unique abilities. There are also several colleges, and I'm not sure if you um, started investigating, but there's also several colleges that have within themselves programs set up mm-hmm. for individuals with autism. Yes. Yeah. So um, I think that is going to be something that you might be investigating. Or I think mm-hmm. it's just good that it's, it's out there and it's, and it's uh, an option. Um, so this is the uh, another question here. Hyper focus is this also a part of autism or just for Ethan? So um, hyper focus is actually one of the key characteristics of individuals with autism. Um, I know what you you've said. Maybe it could be referred to as an obsession or a passion, um, where special interest. a special interest is exactly um, restricted or limited interests, where um, individuals with autism at whatever age they are often have an area of, of focus, a special area of focus, where they um, spend a lot of cognitive and in, in, in energy and focus on that one thing and where they become almost specialists and we actually encourage parents that if your kid has a thing they're going to have a thing if they have mm-hmm. autism right um, to um, to encourage them in that and to give them places where they can shine and be um, the expert you know so mm-hmm. if your kid is an expert it loves trains for example um, if you're talking about small children then your child could be the expert when it's that time at school so that he can tell everybody at school about trains and models mm-hmm. and where they came from so I think that um, there is a way um, to use that to your boot for your good exactly. and you've done that right yeah and then question from Catherine with ADHD uh, and by the way I also have ADHD um, and hyperfocuses are often, or are are very much, um, as Crystal said, very much associated with autism spectrum disorders, but also with ADHD as well. Right. Um, and I mean, I the question the this is my worry for my son, sixteen ADHD. Um, I always encourage, as Crystal said, high hyperfocuses. I think that there are so many different benefits um for instance going um I you know at least in 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 high school you know there are clubs Mm -hmm. so you know for instance there's a minecraft club in my school so if your hyper focus is minecraft you know you can go into that club Mm -hmm. with and possibly meet other people you know a friend with different um special interests uh for that matter um going in uh, towards college um, with classes and um, you know there are so many different cla- classes and hyper fo- 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 uh, hyper focuses could just be 
you know, maybe leading towards a major and after college, a career. Uh, I've seen so many different places where people go and, um, and, you know, they have a hyper focus in one thing and take that and have that be their major in college. Mm -hmm. And then that's their career. Um, So that will lead to great things. And I think that, you know, it's, on, on the very basic standpoint, it's a hobby. Right. Um, it's, it's an extreme one, but it's a hobby. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, for instance, I know, you know, n- neurotypical individuals, for instance, that, you know, if they're going and are upset or something and they go in their room and read, mm-hmm. for instance, mm-hmm. you know, and with hyper focuses, it's the same thing. You know, whenever I'm overstimulated or hyper anxious stress whatever it happens to be even depressed um i you know go and do my do my hyper focus and that calms me down so i think that's just a great thing in general actually that's good and i think i want to add to that um speaking about college i know we uh, have some questions about that um and as we mentioned there are um, departments that support our students who have special needs within the college arena so if, for example if your child has an iep and that supports them within the school district and the, and the until they're 18 when they go to college they can take that document that individual education plan um, to their college of choice and find the disabilities department or, or services office and they will be able to use an IEP and give some accommodations and modifications that are related to that. Um, they do the same thing for people, uh, young adults who are blind or hearing impaired or who have learning disabilities who can't do note taking. So there's a variety of resources that are out there for our um, young adults with uh, challenges. And I think that um, you'd be able to investigate that. And that might be something that you look at at a college, right? To maybe even help you determine if that's the best college for you. Definitely, yeah. definitely. How much support is that college willing to, to give you? Mm-hmm. Um, so any uh, last questions, please let us know. We've got a few minutes left. Yeah, we have four. Okay. Yeah. four minutes left, everyone. So if you got any more questions, please let us know. Um, my last question for you, Ethan, is what are some upcoming events for you? Where can we find Ethan Hirschberg? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so um, I, as I said, I blog all the time through my blog, The Journey Through Autism. And that can be found at www.thejourneythroughautism.com. And um, through there, you can also find certain um, links through, um, you know, to our articles that I've written on um, publications such as um, the LA Times and um, I Care for Autism, The Mighty, and um, Organization for Autism research, etc. Um, when it comes to speaking engagements, um, for public ones that are open to the pu- public and are not just private, I will always go and um, promote them well in advance. So if you are in the area, you can definitely come and hear me speak. Um, and I am looking forward to just being able to go and, um, I mean, work working on, on a book right now, being able to go and do um, a bunch of different other advocacy roles in the autism community. That's awesome. And somewhere in there, you're still being a teenager, is that yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> you're driving, Yeah. right? I want to say this, parents, because that was like inspiring to me. Um, Ethan can tie his shoes by <laughs> himself and he can drive. Right. So when you're parenting a young child with autism, these are some of the things you think about, like, will my child ever tie their shoes? Will they ever be able to to drive? Will they be able to, you know, be successful? Yeah. And and we have a, a young adult right here who's doing that, you yeah. know. And the thing with driving, actually, just specifically, is believe it or not, there are actually a lot of companies that have um, instructors that have some sort of specialty in. Um, special needs um so i actually didn't even think that 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 was a possibility but it is so um there are lots of resources like that available that's great that's great so there's hope for us parents (laughs) on so many levels that's why i have to have ethan here to to kind of give us that that example um so last questions Uh, i'm glad we were able to answer your question catherine yes the iep 
not in its not in the same exact sense that it exists in the school district, but you can take your IEP and the college can provide accommodations and modifications based on what existed in the school setting before college. So definitely it's worth investigating. So I hope that that gives you some hope as you continue to parent your child. Um, and as for me, I'm, again, I'm so glad to have had you here. Um, every month we have a Facebook Live. So for those of you who are, this is your first time tuning in, definitely um, visit our Facebook page, which is um, Sanford Autism Consulting um, SD Autism Help dot com is the website where I post about events. I also blog a lot of supports for parents, especially who are new to an autism diagnosis. So if that is you or if you know someone who is new to autism, definitely um, have them check out the website. Um, I will be talking about IEPs. Um, that's going to be coming up in July. So we're going to do an in-person event in San Diego uh, for those who are interested. And we're also going to be uh, offering that as a, a, a live uh, a video webinar. So that information will be coming soon. Definitely continue to check our Facebook page and website for Sanford Autism Consulting. So. Any last words, Ethan? No, just thank you so much for having me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm so glad. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm so glad to have you continue to work on my website, too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> While you get to also enjoy the summer. Yes, absolutely. Right? Yeah. And then if you guys have any more questions that we didn't get to answer, if you guys see this um, later at any point, uh, just comment, and uh, we will both try and get back to you whenever we can. Awesome. All right. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Um, and thank you everyone for watching. It's been wonderful to be here in Adventures in Autism with Crystal Sanford and Ethan Hirschberg. And we hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks so much.